it, we are talking about the kingdom and Jesus, you know, he preached his message as the gospel of the kingdom. He preached that repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. See, my heart's cry is, you know, I, I have no idea how long this series will go. Okay. Uh, and this week when I was just, you know, doing communion with, my, with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit told me, Sam, why are you in a hurry? You don't have to be in a hurry. You know, this church is always there. There are people who will stay with you. So don't be in a hurry. You know, teach them slowly, methodically, systematically. So that it stays with them. So my heart's cry is, and I believe it's the Spirit of God that has been leading us into from one series to another. And I believe why he's doing that is because even if one verse remains from that series, you don't remember anything from the heart series, but one verse, you don't remember anything from the kingdom series, but one verse, that verse can absolutely change your life. Especially in the moments of, you know, trouble and it, you know, dist you're completely distracted and it just feels like you're choked up. That one verse might be the only anchor that you need, right? So, you know, whenever I'm talking about kingdom series, I began with this. I begin with this saying that Jesus preached the kingdom of God. He said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. I'm doing this again and again so that you will remember this verse. You remember this verse. Meditate on this verse. So Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand it is within your reach if you change your mind it is within your reach you don't have to die you can just receive it right now and you know while we were worshiping i was just reminded of this you know so many times we began in the kingdom by surrendering to the king right we began in the kingdom by surrendering and saying jesus you are my lord but there are so many aspects of our lives which we haven't surrendered Okay, we have surrendered in our conscious mind, but it's like, you know, uh, can someone come? Jeremy, come. I'll just show you an illustration. It's like, I'm saying, Jeremy, I'm giving you this flask. Take it. Take it. Take it. See, that's the problem. He can't take it unless I release it. So we say we want to give, but we are not able to release because of our heart issues or whatever, right? And Take it. It's like finally that thing happens when I can completely trust in who God is. Okay? Thank you. So I want to tell you that a lot of times we do want to surrender. We do want to consciously surrender. But we can't. It's, it's an issue. We, we can't. It's like, you know, just, just imagine with me, okay? You're driving the car. And there's Jesus, imaginary Jesus, who's seated beside you and he says let go of the wheel can you I'm, don't do it okay i'm just saying i'm just saying but you know it's just practically there are certain aspects of our lives which is so difficult it's like certain aspects of finances lord yeah you do that part this i have to take care of it otherwise this will not happen it will not move forward there are certain aspects of our lives which we think that we have to do our part and I'm saying, you, we have to do our part. It comes from that place of, you know, I have to do it. I can't let the Lord get involved in this. Right? So, surrender is very powerful. Surrender is so powerful. And surrender is a process. And I believe the Lord gives us so many years on the earth is just to teach us this. Surrender. I, I am good. You can trust me. I love you. I care for you. And I can do this much better than you do. Right? And probably it takes like 40, 50 years to learn that. But, you know, I think if we can all agree that the Lord is good and every time we hear God's word, we are in the attitude of humility and be humble. I, I do believe that there's each time there's a new dimension that is opened up for us. Amen. Amen. Okay. So Jesus preached the kingdom. He said, repent for the kingdom of God is at Hand. So the moment you surrender to the king, the king's dominion, the king's reality takes over our lives. And it has a capacity to overtake us. It has a capacity to overwhelm our reality that we have created. Okay. Now, can I tell you something? No matter how much we complain, the reality that you are living in is of your making. You know, you can keep blaming everybody else, but the reality that you are living in is of your making. 
it's the culmination of your choices and the consequences of your choice. But you know, we don't want to accept that, so we blame everybody else, right? But in spite of our stupidity and our weaknesses and our sins, the kingdom of God has the power to overtake that reality. Amen. That's why when we come into such in such holy moments of prayer and adoration and worship and the word, we are actually asking the Lord, Lord, you know, I'm, I'm done doing this. I'm done living my reality. I want to live your reality. Amen. That's why Jesus stepped down. You know, he became flesh because he knew that we couldn't do it. We couldn't just step into his reality. So he became man so that he could pull us into his reality. He can pull us into his reality. Yeah. I am, I'm jumping forward, but I just want to say this. If you have people in your life who are superior to you, they are there so that they can pull you into their reality. It's the same principle. The same principle. So whenever, you know, you get offended by your superiors, you know, do you re recognize the kind of opportunity that you're losing? Every failure in life can be traced back to dishonor. Every failure. But today, I do want to talk about honor, but there's something more that I want to talk about, okay? So let's revise. We, we learned about honor. The first thing that I taught you was honor. Honor gives you access to the kingdom, right? Honor gives you access to the kingdom. Jesus said, I give you the keys of the kingdom. So there are many keys and you need all the keys so that you can unlock the entire reality of the kingdom. I give you the keys of the kingdom and honor gives you access to all of these keys. Now, just imagine, because of honor, you got, all, you got all the keys, right? Each key is the knowledge of Jesus in that particular dimension. What is each key? Each key is the knowledge of Jesus or the knowledge of God in that particular dimension. So you need all of these keys to operate in every dimension. For example, you got, uh, you know, for example, just imagine you're living in a house. And each house has a key to its room, right? And all the rooms are closed and you have only the key to the living room. Now, that is fine, absolutely fine. But what if you want to go to the washroom? What do you do? And you don't have the key. You see, you see the frustration? You see the desperation? That's how some of our lives are. Now, the choice is either you can really, you know, you can, in your desperation, you can figure out where is the key for the bathroom and, you know, open the door and get it done. Or you can get comfortable in your living room and make the living room your bathroom. You know what I'm trying to say? Right? So don't get content. If there is frustration, if there is desperation, don't, don't just make that to be, you know, oh, yeah, I'm, yeah. But turn that narrative into hunger and thirst for knowing God. Let every desperation, you know, if, for example, if finances are just not working for you, You've heard every sermon that's out there, but it's just not working for you. Let it not, you know, just be like, oh, you know what? This is not going to happen in my life. I just have to do with whatever I have. I'm saying make that frustration as a hunger to know God in that area. Lord, reveal yourself to me because knowing you is the key to this dimension. And it could be to any, any dimensions that you're struggling with. It could be relationships. It could be career. It could be wisdom, you know. It could be just talking to people. It could be anything. Anything that you're struggling with, there's a key that will unlock that dimension. And that key is the knowledge of God. Amen? Okay. So what does the knowledge of God do? The knowledge of God unlocks the kingdom. Right? And I want to tell you, when you read God's word, God's word will reveal three things to you. Okay, and they are all about Jesus. But three things I want to specify. The first one is the nature of God. The nature of God tells who God is so, so that we can trust him, so that we know that he does not change based on time and, you know, circumstances. The nature of God. And when we know who God is, we also recognize what our identity is because our identity comes from his nature, comes from his image, right? So the first one is the nature of God. The second one is the promises of God. The promises of God tells us where we are heading, all, the, uh, all, that is, all that has been made accessible and available to us in the person of Jesus. So you can know the nature of God, but if you don't know the promises of God, you know, you'll be like a, you'll be living like a, you know, poor person. You, you understand what I'm saying? 
Yeah. So you you need to know the promises of God to understand where you're heading, where you're going, what the Lord has for you, what the Lord has made already available and accessible for you in the person of Jesus. Right. Now, Lighthouse, since we've been doing Lighthouse Church, I know two things Lighthouse Church is very strong in, which is knowing who God is and the promises. Lighthouse is very good with that. And I know that as, as, as the shepherd of the church, I understand that. But the third thing which the Bible talks about and which we are just learning, which we are just babies, and I believe that the, that the Lord has chosen such a time as this to reveal this to us. And that is the principles of God. Honor is one principle. Okay? So I'm going to talk about the principles of God and talk on uh, one more thing that goes after uh, honor. Okay? So remember how I said honor is a principle? Right? It's a principle that gives us access to God's blessings. And the second thing is it gives us the understanding on how to use those blessings. Got it? The third thing is I want to talk to you about Honor creates order. What does honor do? It creates order. Any aspect of your life which is chaotic, which is in confusion, is because there is no order in that dimension. Think about it. Any aspect in your life which you're confused about, which is all over the place, it's because there's no order. And you know what, uh, to be honest, uh, I never liked the word order. Okay? In fact, Blessy was reminding me the other day, we were so against order because we compared ourselves with the religious churches at that time and, you know, we were very rebellious, you know, traditional churches and you know, that's religion, you know, and we used to, used to be so anti-order that in our anti-orderness, we found order. Are you getting me? Yeah, so the initial years when we started the church, you know, we would first do word and then we do, you know, like there was no order. There was no fixed order. Why? We are purposely doing it because so that there's no fixed order, set order, set. But now the Holy Spirit is telling us, think about this. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. The world was full of void. There was emptiness. It was chaotic. There was no form, right? And what was the Holy Spirit doing? It was hovering over the waters. Meaning it was hovering over the, that chaos was hovering over the emptiness, was hovering over that was formless. And then the Lord spoke and it is the Holy Spirit that brought things into order. He brought things from chaos into order. He brought things form from formless things. So if God can do that with the universe, he can do that with your life too. If there are stuff in your life that is chaotic, that is, you know, formless, that is void, that is empty, God can bring that into order. Because what does Paul say in Romans 14, 17? The kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but it is righteousness, peace and joy. The word righteousness means setting things right, setting things in order. So righteousness of the body is health, living in health. Righteousness of the soul is not being depressed and having, you know, having a healthy emotions and healthy thoughts. So righteousness means setting things in order. Setting things in a divine order. Okay? You know, one, one of the problems, I'll tell you with the churches, and I think it's with us also. The problem is not that we are ignorant of God's principles. That's not the problem. Okay? The problem is not that we are ignorant of God's principles. In fact, we know God's principles. In fact, we also have an idea on how, how to apply those principles, but we don't know when we apply them, how in what sequence they should be applied. We don't know that. Let me explain. Let me explain. Listen to me very carefully. If you're making a cake and there are many ingredients to the cake, right? Tell me some ingredients. Baking powder, eggs, flour, chocolate, sugar. Now just imagine, you love sugar and you just put 3 kgs of sugar in a 1 kilogram of cake. What is, what's, what is going to be the result? Okay? It, it's, it's not going to taste good. Okay? For example, if you're making rice, 
and when you're boiling the rice, you put two kilo of salt in it. What is what is it going to taste like? Is salt good? Of course, it's good, but you need to put the right proportion. The problem is we know the principles, but we really don't know on how to apply those principles in the right proportion. So we know, oh, you know what? We have to say the name of Jesus. We know we have to confess the word. Oh, you know, we have to call down the fire of the Holy Spirit. And we know how to uh, cover us by the blood of Jesus. But when a problem comes, you don't know what you do. So you use all of it. And then something works. Then you're like, okay, something worked. It's like hit and trial. Why? Because you don't know. My people perish for lack of knowledge and understanding. We know, you know, we think we know things. And, and the the biggest trouble in this day and age is YouTube. Because you can get knowledge from so many people, from so many, uh, you know, sources, but you don't get a methodical, systematic way of learning things. Just imagine if, you know, just imagine somebody comes to you and says, hey, I have a plane. Uh, do you want to sit in the plane? And I will fly you. And you say, do you know how to fly? Yeah, I learned it from YouTube. How many of you would sit with that person? And that's the same thing how we live our lives. We don't take it so seriously. So there has to be a systematic way of learning God's principles so that we can apply those principles in the right proportions, in the right context, in the right circumstances. See, the, it's, it's not just the truth that will set you free. It's the knowledge of the truth that sets us free. So that's why Jesus said, know the truth and it shall set you free. The truth has a power to set you free, but you have to know the truth. Somebody listening to me. See, everything that God has created follows a systematic pattern. I know you don't like order, neither do I, but I'm learning to be humble. Okay, <laughs> Anything that God has created follows a systematic pattern. Let me give you an example. If God wants to make a tree, he does not make a tree from scratch. What did he do? He made a tree once and that tree has a system of reproducing itself. Are you hearing me? Okay. Everything in the cosmos is automated. He just does it once and it's automated. It just keeps going on. I, I, I come from a technical background. I have a business in automating things for my clients. So when I do automate things, I do understand the gravity of how much you know, God was taking pleasure in automating things. When he made you, he did not really make you from the dust, right? How were you made? You, you were the product of your parents. It was, he created a system. He doesn't do it again. He does not need to do it again. I'll give you one, one tip for all the business owners, okay? If you can create a system in your life for your business, your business will grow automatically. Look at anything. So God creates a system and those systems, you know, they function automatically. Now, you understand the grace of God, you understand the nature of God, and you know that God is for you. But if you violate his principles, you have to go through the consequences of violating those principles. Are you hearing me? Let me give you an example. There's a principle on the earth which is known as the law of gravity. What is the law of gravity? That there's a, there's a force on the, at the core of the earth that pulls things down to its, its, to, towards itself, right? Now, because of the law of gravity, if I jump from a 10th floor building, no matter how much I'm going to shout the name of Jesus and the grace of God and God loves me, I am going straight down and I am going to die and get to heaven and then worship him there. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You cannot violate the principle of God and expect a different outcome. The reason why we can't predict our outcomes is because we don't have mastery over the principles of God. We don't have mastery. So when a problem hits us, we're like, Pastor, please pray for me. And then, you know, we're trying everything that we know. Why? Because we don't have mastery. And for mastery, we need a master. And that master is the Holy Spirit. See, that is why it is important for all of us to get connected to a local church and not just move from one church to another, not just move from one YouTube sermon to another sermon. Because in the local church, you have, you know, you have somehow submitted to the authority of the local church. And what you're saying is, Lord, you are going to speak through this church. I am going to trust in what you are doing in this church. And that gives an order into your life. 
it brings an order but we move from one sermon to another sermon now think about it okay just if a, if the word of god is a seed okay and you're just listening to one sermon to another you know i'm reminded of my dad you know he would come home he would snatch the tv remote and from channel 1 to channel 100 he's just switching channels and then once he reaches the end then he'll come back 100 to 1 you know at the end we are we are all staring at the tv but not really watching anything now if you're going to just watch sermons after sermon think about this if that sermon is the word of god which is a seed you plant a seed in that ground which is your heart so in the morning you planted the seed of honor in the evening you listen to something else and i'm not talking about them they are doing their job but i'm saying look at your heart in the evening you you heard a sermon on stewardship so you planted a seed of stewardship then the next morning you heard a sermon on the holy spirit you planted a seed of holy spirit. in the same ground so many seeds now tell me which one will grow nothing will grow they will all fight with each other are you getting what i'm saying you need you the ground which is your heart needs time to rest and to soak into that message that you have received and then that's why meditation is so important meditating on god's word and and you know prayer is so important you have to balance hearing god's word with prayer because prayer is like putting water into the ground and you are believing that this word that i have received i am going to see it happen in my life that's why the word says it's through patience and faith that you see the fruit see the fruit of the spirit is much 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 more important than the gift of the spirit because the fruit comes when the tree is matured the gift anybody can operate and i'm not trying to negate that you should not pursue gifts but i'm saying if god can use a donkey to bring a prophetic word to the prophet he can use anybody but it's the fruit that brings in maturity you have to be matured that's why we are asking lord lord we want to be matured are you hearing me with me just imagine as you were growing up there was this little finger of yours which was growing faster than the rest of the body what would you call it by the by the time you're 10 years old your height is this much but your finger is that long i'm sorry i am bringing my finger what would you call it it's abnormal right so i am saying judge your growth if you think you are growing that is faster than the local church that you're in something is wrong something is wrong either you have not submitted to the message of the church or this this something else that's happening see you know when the holy spirit gave me this word two weeks ago while i was meditating just close my eyes i was meditating and the picture that he showed me was a weed a weed also thinks that the weed is growing but the weed is choking the entire bunch that is around it so i am saying if you bring order in your life by submitting to the authority that is that is that god has placed that's that's the first thing that you have to discern is this the local church where god has placed you if the answer is yes if the answer is no sure find that place where god should plant you right if this is the local church where god has planted you if that's the answer then be submissive because in submission god brings order into your life okay can i show you a verse romans chapter 13 come with me romans chapter 13 romans chapter 13 from verse 1 let every person how many person is it for all or is it just for some people every person let every person be subject to the governing authorities every person be subject to the governing authority i know you don't like it neither do i i like criticizing the governing authorities but this is what the bible says let every person be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except from god and those that exist have been instituted by god there is no authority i know we hate the government but i am saying how many times have you prayed for the government because the bible says pray for your government so that everything will go well with you we can sit and criticize how much ever we want but if we don't really follow what the bible says our life is not going to have the same results as what we have been promised me and betty we learned something you know because 
through the week, you know, as pastors, we, we get frustrated, you know, and, and there's this, there are times when we are critical, right? And we learned this, that being critical is a sign of prayerlessness. If you are praying for somebody, if I'm praying for Alvin, and I'm really genuinely praying for him, I can't be critical of him. Because when I'm praying for him, God will reveal his heart, how he sees Alvin. And when I see that, I can't be critical of him. I can't do that. And I'm not saying you should not criticize your government and blah, blah. You shouldn't, you know, stand for the truth. I'm not saying all of that. But what I'm saying is, how many times have you actually prayed for them? Yeah? Your, your boss might be absolutely a short-tempered person. Yeah, sure. But how many times have you prayed for them? You might not be having the most healthy culture in the office, but how many times have you really prayed for them? The Bible says, every authority has been instituted by God. Now think about this. When Paul is writing this, he's writing to a bunch of Christians who are being persecuted by King Nero. You and me don't know persecution. The, the, the highest form of persecution that we have got probably is somebody texting us. We don't know persecution. King Nero, he was torching Christians. He was getting them killed by lions. Their bodies were torn apart. They had no family. They had no property. At those times, Paul is saying, be submissive to the governing authorities. Think about it. My goodness. How much more, man? Be submissive to the governing authorities. Why? For there is no authority except from God. Can I ask you something? Is the hand of the Lord short enough to change the heart of the people who are governing us? Why do we think that it is impossible when this government is there that we can't grow? Why do we think like that? Is the hand of the Lord short enough? When I read my Bible, I see the prayer of one person that changed the heart of the king. When I read my Bible, prayers have changed and toppled governments and kings. Is the hand of the Lord that short enough? But the problem, pata kya hai? The problem is, we don't like authority. That's the problem. An orphan spirit, an orphan spirit is rebellious against authority. So we use these, these things to be critical, not because we are really concerned about the nation, but we just don't like authority. Let me give you an example. This is just another example, okay? These days, my, my friend was saying, honor is so trendy, dishonor is so trendy, right? So people will come on comedy shows and they will roast people. And it's so trendy. And that person whom they are roasting is somebody who has done something in his life. Who's actually been a blessing. Are you hearing me? But everybody likes someone who has done something in his life to be roasted. You know why? Because somewhere that bitterness and that jealousy and that anger that they have harbored for so long. They, you know, it's just coming out in laughter and entertainment. That's why dishonor is so trendy. The person who is roasting, he himself knows that he is a good entertainer, but nobody respects him also because how can you respect somebody who is dishonorable? So there are a lot of reasons why we reject authority. We have a problem with authority. It's not because, it's not always because the authority is bad. I just want to say that. It's sometimes because there are heart issues where we have a problem in submitting to them. Let's read what the scripture says. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities, resists what God has appointed. And those who resist will incur judgment. I'm sorry, man, but Paul, the apostle of God's grace, he's talking about judgment. Doesn't make sense. What does he say? For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. 
But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. God has put people over us. God has put people over us so that we can learn under them and through honor they can pull us into their level. That's how it is. It is only through honor. Okay. The other day I was, when I was taking a shower, this is, this is the thing that I was reminded of. Whoever is above you, superior to you, there's a reason why he's superior to you. Because they have some hidden secret knowledge that you don't have. That's the truth of it. Let's just accept that. We can, we can, we can all wrap ourselves under nepotism and you know favoritism, elitism, whatever ism you want to say. And you know that person is promoted because of this. But the truth is, he is there because he has, he or she has some hidden secret superior knowledge than you. That's why he's there. Okay, are you here with me? Do you want to know how you can access that hidden secret treasure? Okay, L listen to me very carefully. Every time, okay, they, they wouldn't release those hidden treasures. No, no, no one would. Even if they would, like for example, I, you know, Matthew started working with me for so long and he still does not do all the stuff that I do. Okay, not because I'm not ready to teach him, but he's not ready to receive. He's, his technical knowledge hasn't developed. He's, he's not there yet. He's still learning, right? Now, one of the ways when you can really access into that hidden treasure are times when these people who have been made superior over you, when they correct you, when they get angry at you, when they scold you, when they get frustrated at you, it is during those times when that treasure is actually open and you have an open access to that treasure. If you don't get hurt and if you still choose to honor, you can learn so much. Instead of being like, man, how dare he talks to me like that? Instead of being like that, if you can take a moment back and think objectively, why? Why was he so angry? For me, it's such a small deal. But why is he making such a big deal of it? Because it is in the little details that sets them apart. It's in the little details. That's why think about it. You know, people who are working with me, they, they'll testify to this. I'm always, I'm always upset about the little details. It's always the little details. It's not the big, big things. Big, if it is a big thing, I'll, I'll tell them, go get into training, go to nursery and learn and come. It's little details that set these people apart. The small, minute details. But if you can honor these people who have been, who are superior to you, you can learn this knowledge and that can bring order into your life. I know you don't want to listen to this, but that's how it is. Hebrews 7 verse 7 says, it is beyond dispute. It is beyond dispute that the lesser is blessed by the greater. It's beyond dispute. If you're being blessed by someone, it's because they are greater than you. It's beyond dispute. You know, when Abraham comes to Melchizedek, right? Now, before he comes to Melchizedek, he meets these, these kings of Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, they're kings. And they say, you know, uh, we, we give you these things. We offer you these things. And Abraham says, no, I'm not going to take anything from you. Because I don't want tomorrow for you to say that I became rich because of your sake. So I'm not going to associate with that, right? And he moves on. But then he meets this king of Melchizedek and he discerns something. And when he discerns something, he offers his tithe. And then Melchizedek, he offers the communion and he receives it. And he is blessed by Melchizedek. And it is in that context, this verse says, without any dispute, the lesser is always blessed by the greater. That's why we are blessed by Jesus. That's why you're blessed by your bosses. That's why you're blessed by your parents. You cannot outrun them in that. Let's understand that order. If you can respect that order, honor will come automatically. Subjection, submission. If you can submit to that order that the Lord has placed over your life, there can be so much things that will be set right into your life. I'm talking about practical stuff. And if you don't like it, I'm sorry, but this is what it is. 
the kingdom of god does not work based on our understanding of what equality means i'm sorry it doesn't work like that if i was the king i would have done it and then seen it to be in ruins but it just doesn't work like that see when when jesus was talking about the talents okay he he said one he gave five second he gave two third he gave one there's no equality in that but we don't have enough information as jesus has so i don't want to even question him why he did that because i'm sure he did it for the best but the lesson over there is not how they began with the lesson over there is what did they do with what they had that's the lesson so bringing order into your life you need order to avoid chaos so when you honor honor automatically creates order in your life i'm going to end this okay and i'll i'll continue next week but listen to this there are five dimensions that i told you about spiritual emotional physical financial and relational these five dimensions of our life is what rules us right like where we rule right where we exist and you need to be healthy in all these five dimensions correct if you bring order by prioritizing the spiritual all the other dimensions will get balanced i'm not saying that you don't have to make efforts in all the other dimensions i'm not saying that but see what jesus said seek the kingdom of god and his righteousness righteousness is already there in the kingdom the kingdom of god is righteousness peace and joy so why did he mention righteousness again he's putting a significance to the kingdom he's sorry he's putting an emphasis on the righteousness he's putting an emphasis so if you emphasize on the spiritual aspect of your life your other portions of your life will be balanced will fall in place i have a lot to say but i'll keep it for next week but here's one example from my life that has really blessed me i want to share share that with you okay a uh, couple of weeks ago we we just went through a really uh really a lot of work in the office and there was a lot of it was it was very hectic it was so hectic that there are certain things that only i can do in the office okay i can't just give it to my employees right there are certain things that only i can do so it was so hectic that it was demanding from me to work for 16 hours a day and it was and also you, as you as you guys know you know we we had the move the holy spirit where the holy spirit was teaching us to pray right so this was like conflicting i wanted to pray but 16 hours of day i can't do anything the work is demanding so much from me so i did from monday to friday till friday i did i followed that routine of 16 hours a day and i was getting exhausted because it just felt like the work was not getting over it was just piling up even more on friday evening i was like you know what i'm just going to let everything go i'm just going to sit in god's presence and you know just take a moment when i was sitting in god's presence the holy spirit asked me sam what do you prioritize in your life is it this business or is it sitting in my presence and that day i realized you know what this is something is wrong this is demonic so i made a decision i made a decision and i'm not telling you to do exactly what i said but please understand the principle the decision that i made was in spite of how my day looks i am only going to work from 10 to 5 that's it okay or when i'm in the office the moment i get home I'm not going to open my laptop because I want to prioritize my life for the other aspects of my life like my wife and God. I'm going to do that. Otherwise it's not going to bring balance. And please let me please I need to clarify this that this kind of work comes like once in 3 years. So I am aware how much it demands from me. But you know 2 weeks before when I started doing that Monday I went to office 10 to 5 I did came back now i'm tempted because i love doing this work i'm tempted you know sam what's the big deal you know just pick one you know pick up pick up the laptop just work for one hour you know it's okay i had to force myself i had to pray i have to sit and pray so that i wouldn't work okay i kept doing it and and my thing is you know if i work for 16 hours then even when i'm sleeping i'm just i'm working my mind is like on can you relate with me and then when you wake up you're so tired right So I was like I don't want this. I want to be fresh. So I worked for 10 to 5 every every day when I when I would go to office, when I go back home, I would just relax from my work. I would either sit and pray or talk to Betty, spend time with her or you know, just just relax. Do you know the favor of the Lord that I have been seeing all my life? 
I saw it once again. You know what was the favor? The favor is what takes one week gets done in a day. What takes one day gets done in an hour. And I'm telling you, I want to challenge you guys. That same favor of God can flow in your life when you prioritize God and His kingdom. When you are more spiritually focused, that same thing can happen. You know the. the kings of the world might come to you for a solution that is billion dollar and you know you just think for 5 minutes and you got it and they've been racking their brains off for so many years that's the favor of the lord you prioritize god and his kingdom all these things shall be added these things are not meant to be pursued these things will be added so prioritize what is important to you let god bring his divine order into your life whatever it is and i'm going to spend next few year few weeks talking to you practically about the other areas you know the other dimensions which is the emotional the physical the financial and the relational how you bring god's order into your life because that is where you need deliverance you know god's love you know his promises but if you're not seeing things happen it's because somewhere you have violated the principles of god and it is only through knowledge and revelation that you can access them and you can open those doors amen may god bless you come on let's pray father we thank you for this moment we thank you for revealing your great mysteries of your word and we just pray for daddy that you will give us a humility to learn and to submit to each other submit to authority submit to the people whom you have placed in our lives and to learn from them through honor father i just bless each and every one of them into your hands let the favor of the lord be upon them increase upon increase for your kingdom to be a blessing in jesus name we pray amen god bless you guys